we welcome the Democratic nominee for president, Secretary Clinton, and the Republican nominee for president, Mr. Trump. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump go all in at the final U.S. presidential debate in Las Vegas. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. Trading accusations of rigged elections and inexperience, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton fought it out during the third and final U.S. presidential debate. CCTV's Nathan King was at the debate, and he joins us now from Las Vegas. And Nathan, this was the final debate, the final chance for the two major presidential candidates to face off. What were the major takeaways? Well, the major takeaway, Anna, was we actually had a debate, at least for the first third of the 19 minutes. You know, it was pretty civil uh, for 30 minutes. So we, there was exchanges and stark differences on everything from uh, women's rights to abortion uh, to immigration, picks for the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court uh, and other areas of domestic policy like gun control. But then suddenly we started seeing the personal attacks uh, come back. Uh, Hillary Clinton accusing Donald Trump of basically being a puppet of Vladimir Putin if he was to become a president. No puppet, replied uh, Donald Trump, hitting him again about his uh, accusations of lewd behavior uh, around women as well. But really, the takeaway uh, from the debate was the fact that Donald Trump, he's been hinting about this on the campaign trail, but actually said in front of tens of millions of Americans that if the result goes against him in the presidential election, he may not respect it. Do you make the same commitment that you will absolutely, sir? that you will absolutely accept the result of this election? I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Unprecedented in U.S. Uh, political history, at least modern political history. He has, as they say in political circles, Hannon, walked this line back a little bit at a rally uh, that he held after the debate. Uh, Donald Trump has been saying that he will respect the result, but only if he wins. So, Nathan, we have less than three weeks until the U.S. presidential election. What can we expect in this final stretch? Well, I mean, barnstorming across the United States, especially the swing states. Uh, now, remember, the electoral map looks very, very good for Hillary Clinton. She's up around eight points uh, ahead of Donald Trump. And those swing states that really decide the election, she's going to spend a lot of time in. We're talking about Ohio. We're talking about Florida. We're talking about North Carolina as well, which has been traditionally Republican. But the map has opened up for her as well. Arizona, a deeply red state near here, uh, Nevada, in the west, she is going to be campaigning there as well. Where does Donald Trump go? He has to take Ohio. He has to take Florida. He has to take North Carolina. He kind of has to take Pennsylvania as well as a New Hampshire. The electoral map does not look good for him, especially trailing in the polls. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happened with this debate and whether it affects the opinion polls as well. Remember, there's still about 10 to 15 percent of the American electorate that haven't decided yet. Thanks, Nathan. That's CCTV's Nathan King reporting from Las Vegas. Joining us now, Chen Weihua is the chief Washington correspondent and deputy editor for China Daily. From London, Abdel Bari Atwan is editor in chief of Rai Al Yum, an independent Arabic newspaper. From Las Vegas, Holger Stark is the Washington bureau chief correspondent for Der Spiegel magazine. And from North Carolina, Mary C. Curtis is a columnist for Roll Call, the U.S. political news website. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Well, as we just heard from Nathan, we had a debate. I want to start by getting uh, your impressions of uh, the main moments of that debate. Let's start with you, Chen Huihua. What was the major moment for you? Well, I agree with Nathan that uh, this debate is better than the previous two in the sense that more substance being discussed. I mean, the previous one, I mean, people like to quote Michelle Obama, like, when they go low, we go high. But in the previous two, I think it's pretty much like, when they go low, we go lower. So I think, you know, uh, for, you know, a lot of people, I think uh, the moderator, Mike Wallace, is uh, very effective in maintaining the order. and. Uh, um, Donald Trump, uh, I mean, the headline today is all about uh, he 
would not uh, accept uh, maybe the result. I mean, I think, you know, there was, uh, you know, the Hillary is uh, really, I mean, he is uh, like a pivoting way, you know, to Russia when asked about the WikiLeaks, you know, all these uh, fundamental issues. I think that's the moment, I would say. Abdel Bari Atwan, uh, what struck you about the debate? Well, to be honest, I was impressed for the first time for the performance of Donald Trump. Uh, for the first time, as I said, he was well prepared. He did his homework. But unfortunately, in the end, he blew it up when he said he is not going to respect the outcome of the ballot box, which is very, very dangerous. It is true, he, in a rally, he said that he will accept it. But the problem is he had the, the best chance to talk to tens of millions of people in, in the United States and all over the world, then he shouldn't actually made that blunder. I should say, OK, I respect the ballot boxes, whatever the outcome. It is actually for the interest of everybody, but he, he, he lost it. Other, other point which struck me, to be honest, when it comes to the foreign policy, he was actually much better than Hillary Clinton, despite he never been a secretary of state. So when he talked about Iraq, when he talked about Russia, when he talked about Syria. So it seems he learned his lessons, you know, from previous setbacks. So, but the problem is, as I said, you know, uh, uh, that the, the ballot boxes are the most important things, and he should respect it to say that the election could be rigged. He talked like a third world leader, not as American, uh, you know, f president or future president. And uh, he should be actually very, very careful when he talks about these kind of, you know, uh, issues, which is very, very essential, very sensitive to, to all American people. OK, I want to get to foreign policy in just a moment, but let me bring in Holger Stark. He's in Las Vegas, the venue where this took place. Holger, what was your takeaway from this? Well, I uh, had the pleasure to be in the debate hall yesterday, and I think Donald Trump didn't too bad. Um, he had uh, some remarkable points, especially uh, exposing Hillary Clinton's weaknesses when it came to the Clinton Foundation, but also when it came to the free trade agreements like NAFTA and others. So he could have scored well. But um, on one hand, I, I agree with the colleagues who said uh, that this uh, deep disdain for a democratic principle like the election really hurt him badly. And on the other hand, Trump didn't uh, need a tie. He basically is trailing in almost every uh, important swing state, as Nathan had pointed out. So Donald Trump Trump really needed to score big yesterday night, and I think he failed in that. Mary C. Curtis, what did you think? Well, as everyone else has said, he was speaking to his base on issues from the Supreme Court to gun control. The problem is, is he needs to expand his base if he is to win, particularly with these suburban white women in states like I am here in North Carolina. And he didn't do that. And, of course, he guaranteed what the headline would be when he said he would not accept the results of the election. Uh, I see — I just came today from a Tim Kaine rally, who was the vice presidential candidate on the Democratic ticket, and that was his headline, that Donald Trump doesn't respect the democratic process. Uh, and you will see all of the candidates, their surrogates and spouses here in North Carolina, because he needs to win this state if he is to win uh, the election. And Hillary Clinton doesn't need to do it. So if she wins here, then really the election is over. Chen Weifo, let's unpack some of what took place in that debate on Wednesday night. China was mentioned seven times during the debate, specifically Hillary Clinton's criticism that China was dumping steel uh, in the United States. That's Chinese exports of steel and aluminium to the United States. Let's watch a bit of what happened. He mentioned China. And, you know, one of the biggest problems we have with China is the illegal dumping of steel and aluminum into our markets. I have fought against that as a senator. I've stood up against it as Secretary of State. Donald has bought Chinese steel and aluminum. In fact, the Trump Hotel right here in Las Vegas was made with Chinese steel. So he goes around with crocodile tears about how terrible it is. But he has given That's jobs to Chinese steel workers, not American steel workers. Mr. Trump. Why has China become such a convenient whipping boy during these debates? I mean, we didn't hear, we heard this not just in this debate, but in previous debates as well. Yeah, I mean, previous uh, campaign, I mean, 2012, going even further ahead, I mean, the main thing is because China is rising, I mean, uh, fast. So, I mean, the American politics always need sort of adversary enemy. I mean, it's so like, uh, 
you are really have the you have the guts if you take on China and the, the heavyweight. But I think what's troubling here is really the sort of uh, protectionism, you know, uh, voiced by both candidates, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I mean, what's wrong with, uh, say, Trump Tower using steel from China or? Uh, Hillary Clinton has charged him also like having shirts made in China or Mexico. What's wrong with that? I mean, um, I would love to see actually one day the United States making the shirts and maybe steel and China making, you know, airplanes, maybe high tech products. You know, what kind of America you want? I mean, Hillary Clinton want America to be. I mean, low, in the low end assembly line. So I think, you know, What's, if you look at the world, I mean, Britain and the United States, anti-trade, anti-globalization is a serious issue. And you look at China, I mean, for 40 years, I mean, people, I mean, the West oppressed China for more trade. Now China is going to become the champion of globalization and open trade. I mean, you just look at the reality today. I mean, uh, so I think, you know, f uh, but this rhetoric, you know, it's like, uh, is appealing to the voters, and that's really troubling. I mean, it's like, you know, someone just cited the uh, uh, Tim Kane, I mean, talking in the last vice presidential debate, uh, accusing his Michael Pence of, call, I mean, uh, Trump calling uh, Vladimir Putin a leader. What's like, wrong? I mean, he yeah. is a leader. I mean, uh -huh. you know, you, you like him or not. I mean, so I think this kind of a political correctness is really deeply sad. I mean. I can tell, I mean, Hillary Clinton, I mean, he called the TPP gold standard, but for Trump campaign purposes, he, she neither denying it. I mean, say, I don't like it, you know. But I think this is, I mean, if you look at, uh, in mm -hmm. the email, she has a private rhetoric and versus a public rhetoric. I don't, and I mean, the low trust was in this. I think this is deeply troubling. Right, I mean. and now, right now we're hearing a lot of, I guess, what would be called election rhetoric, right? Mm -hmm.